Um Ali Murad doesn't know if she or her nine children will survive the Israeli onslaught on Gaza. Her blast-damaged, rented home in the beach refugee camp lying beside the sea offers no protection against Israeli naval shelling. Her landlord says the family should find a new house as this one is in danger of collapsing. Um Ali is desperate. These nine children, what can I do with them? When the Navy boats shell in the evening, I run out not knowing what to do with the children. Should I count them? Should I hold them? How should I protect them? Aid agencies say Gaza's one and a half million population are in dire need of food, water and medical supplies. But Israel's round-the-clock bombardment is hampering relief efforts. Freezing cold is compounding the misery of children caught in the conflict. The International Committee of the Red Cross describes the situation as both chaotic and extremely dangerous. Gazans are fending for themselves as best as they can. In the Khan Yunus refugee camp, a bakery which still uses liquid gas is busy. Gaza's main power station has been damaged, sending residents to places like this to bake their bread. Before the shelling and the latest war, we used to light the oven once in the morning and once at night. But now we light from morning through till 10 in the evening. Earlier on Monday, Israel allowed 80 trucks of humanitarian aid into the Gaza Strip. The Jewish state says it will allow essential aid to flow into the besieged Palestinian enclave. Distributing the supplies is another matter. The whole of Gaza is a war zone. Dozens more civilians were killed on Monday. Palestinian medics say the overwhelming majority of people killed since the ground assault began on Saturday were civilians. It's not just food and water they're running out of here but body bags too. Helen Long Reuters.